Back in 2017, I charged a smartphone with hydropower from my rain gutter using a bell siphon and a 3D printed generator. But that only used the rain from a single section of my roof. This time, I'm using all the rain from my house by capturing it where it meets the street. But to do that, I need to dig up the underground rain pipe at its lowest point, cut into it, and add fittings so we can capture the energy of the water before sending it to the street. This is one of those rare times I find myself wishing it would rain. Hey, now we're talking. Look at that. All right, so block that with your hand and we'll see how high it goes up inside the tube. Oh, it's not. Are we losing it somewhere? Uh-oh. This ruins my whole assumption. This is cold. Oh, there it goes. Oh. It's just taking a long time. <laughs> Oh, it's taking a long time because it has to fill that tube. It was already filling part of the tube, but now it's having to back it all the way up to the house, and that's a lot of volume. So that's why it's taking so long to fill up. That, that makes sense. It also means it's going to pour for a while when you take your hand off. If you get to the point you can't hold it anymore, you just let go all at once and we'll walk. Oh, oh, wow, look at that. Oh my gosh. It is, wow. Oh, and it's totally, look at how dirty it is. Uh-oh. Maybe because it's like going faster. Oh, <laughs> now it's draining. That sure looks like more power than my old rain gutter project. But to find out exactly how much is available, we need to go back to basic physics. Obviously, the higher the water is, the more energy and power, so that's the first thing we need to know. I'm going to be generous and say that we have a single meter of height because metric units make the math way simpler, and what could be easier than multiplying by one? Next is flow rate. During steady rain, I was getting roughly two gallons per minute off my one section of roof, and with two and a half times that area, we should get five gallons per minute. But I can't just multiply gallons in meters, so after conversion, I'm getting about 0.3 liters per second. And this math will work with any fluid on any planet, so we need to tell it that we're using the density of water with the gravity of Earth. Multiply all the numbers together, making sure our units cancel out, and we get a little over three watts. But to find out exactly how much height we've got, I'm plugging the opening and installing a valve so my daughter doesn't have to sit there freezing her hand while we wait for it to back up. So it seems to have stalled out around two feet. And I'm wondering if that's because it's filling the horizontal pipe that's at the foundation. Like just totally building up this giant reservoir. <laughs> Which would be kind of cool. I'm not sure how I'll figure out if that's what it's doing other than just waiting. I can see how far it goes and how long it goes. Yeah, let's let's do that. Okay, so that's enough to make... See what that feels like. Cold. <laughs> it does feel cold. And we've got it restricted down in there. But that's enough to, to make some electricity. Wouldn't be a lot. Sometimes it's like going back up a little. So like if I put your finger, if I put my finger over the end, three, two, one, stop. Does that make it go boy? It's like a hydraulic spring. Yeah. <laughs> come, come close. Look at all the gunk in there. It plugged this up, so I probably need to... Take that off and like wash it out. Oh yeah, let's do it. Whoa! <laughs> All right, I'm gonna put my hand over the end. Ah, I'm trying. Yeah, it's just gunk. Gunk got in there. Ah, that's all it takes is a little seed pod to plug up a nozzle. Good luck getting it back on there. Ew! <laughs> this looks so bad. Look at that, just cycling up and down with, I mean, it's gotta be. There's more where that came from. Pr pressure is equal with height. 
So we know the tube back up in here is doing that. It's it's doing that somewhere between here and the house is sloshing up and down and up and down with that. And see it plugged. It already plugged again. Well, do we just get it over with and get all that junk out? Sure. Look at this nasty. It's grit. It's bits of stuff. Oh boy. Oh, that's a lot more than last time. <laughs> well, at least it's going to make it to the street now. Check it out. Okay, that's enough playtime with hydraulics, because if we're ever going to make electricity, we need to resurrect the old 3D printed generator slash turbine setup and make sure it still works before installing it at the curb. Let's try it. But though this exact setup worked great when fed from a barrel on my roof, it's readily apparent the tubing and nozzle are terribly undersized for this application. Look at that. Change, change in momentum, just like a Pelton wheel is supposed to do. Look at that, it's splitting it back in both directions. Getting that up, and now there's our overflow. So, uh, bigger nozzle. Now I could calculate an ideal tube diameter for this head and flow rate, but sometimes it's more fun to grab the components you already have and try it. Wow, look at that. It's filling the tube, but nothing's moving. Our head, I don't know if you can see that, it's up to it's up to about there. Maybe if I just give it a little. Huh? Oh. Almost. Tell you what, let's let's trap it. See, these are the times I wish it was raining harder. <laughs> A guy who doesn't grew up hating the rain. Okay, we're up here just above the aluminum. I'm gonna see if it spins when I take my thumb off. Hey! Not very fast, but it's moving. Come on, man. Yeah, we're not gonna get much voltage off of that. All right, let's see how much head we can build up. Oh, silly. Durr. <laughs> Just lift the thing up. <laughs> it's like, what could I put in here to plug the, uh, to plug the hose? Gravity, how's that sound? We're just about to crest on this. This is gonna be we might, oh, oh, I got water coming out of here. That makes sense. Let's do this. I think we might light up a... We might get it. Oh, come on. Hey! I saw my LED blink. Did I lose a wire? Where's the other... It's blinking! How come I'm only getting intermittent blinks? There it goes. Oh, look at that. It's like blink, 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 blink. I must be uh, a quint. Let's uh, get it to where you can let go, shall we? Okay. Some of my magnets must not be evenly. I have it in series. Well, it tells me my generator isn't completely healthy. Because I don't have any... Uh... Well, shoot, let's make sure you can see this. I got the blinky blinky. It's going blink, 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 blink. So, like, maybe some of my magnets fell out because it's in series. So, um, I guess I could flip that around and see if I'm getting better current in the other direction. And then, uh... Boy, look at that water flowing. So there's our there's our water level. So we've only dropped from there to there. But we are making electricity from the from the rain. So I think the Pelton, as we know, Pelton 
uh, is made for higher pressure and lower flow. And we have flipped from, uh, we've gone to higher flow, so we more than doubled the flow and, and cut the pressure to less than half. <laughs> so, uh, probably trying some different geometry on our, uh, on our turbine is what's going to make the biggest difference right now. Try that out. So after a little CAD to increase the size of the Pelton spoons, I get to print the very first turbine on my new Form 4 printer in Tough 2000 resin. You may remember on my original rain power project, I used an FDM printer followed by an acetone bath to smooth out layer lines. But resin printers leave such a smooth surface, this thing is essentially ready to go. I can't wait to get it out to the curb and see how it performs. Okay, we're overflowing. <laughs> I need to. Let's do this thing. I think it stopped raining. Oh. Heck yeah. There. That's running. Now I can mess with my LEDs. Oh, there we go. What was I doing? Something. It's a connection thing. Where's my bad connection? Wiggle. Wiggle. Come on, LEDs. There we go. Look at that. Okay, some. <laughs> it must be. Woo, it's ripping along, too. Hey. I don't know if you can see that blinking or not. That looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. Now, can you let go, Mr. Engineer? Nice. Check it out. That is our rainwater. We're not exactly sustaining the water coming out. Now I just need a, uh, we don't have a rectifier. But we can rectify that. Wah, wah. Dad joke. Don't have a rectifier, but that is something we can rectify. Very nice. I think that is doing better. You tell me, I think that, that, that looks better than yesterday with that tiny little that tiny little pelt in the wheel. Very cool. Oh yeah, it's right here. As soon as I let go. Am I shorting out or something? Oh! They're touching each other. Durr. Okay. See, I have my two... I literally got my wires crossed. I knew because I saw the... Uh, I saw the turbine basically stop. And it's like, why would that stop when the water's still flowing the same? It's like, oh, because I shorted the terminals across it. So, ah, my fault, my bad. Way cool. It's basically stopped raining right now. So we're just dealing with the water that's in the pipe. Um, but I can go build a rectifier for this really quick and we'll just wait for it to start raining again. It's supposed to rain a bunch today. In one of my earlier videos, I explained these opposing LEDs blink because a magnet is sweeping across both sides of the same coil, driving current in opposite directions. Spinning the alternator with my lathe lets us watch the physics in real time. This shows why alternators produce alternating current that has to be rectified if you want direct current like a battery. Arranging the LEDs like the diodes of a rectifier, you can see how the load at the bottom lights up no matter the direction of current flow. To light the LED continuously, we add a capacitor. It acts like a balloon storing and flattening out the peaks of electrical pressure for nice, steady, direct current. Now the math at the beginning of this project was probably a stretch for some of you, while others would have liked to have seen me go deeper. But that's what I like most about Brilliant, an online learning platform that helps you build understanding from the ground up. Brilliant has thousands of interactive lessons in math, science, programming, data analysis, and AI. Their newly updated math courses help you establish a strong foundation in algebra and then build on that to conquer calculus and beyond with an emphasis on problem solving and reasoning throughout. With Brilliant, you'll discover all the algebra you can already do, but haven't realized yet. Plus, you'll strengthen your logical reasoning and problem-solving skills with lessons that give the perfect level of challenge. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, go to brilliant.org forward slash quintbuilds or click on the link in the video description. 
you'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. I'd like to thank Brilliant for sponsoring this video and thank you for considering Brilliant. Hey, there it goes. That must mean it's ready. Let's do this. Oh yeah. <laughs> Uh, while I'm holding that, what are we getting? 2.74 volts and almost 4 milliamps. 3.8. If you can see that, 3.7. Oh, come on now. That works. All right, those LEDs. Nice and bright. Pretty cool. Yeah, do I have my... I gotta have my polarity right on those things. It wouldn't work otherwise. Anyway... Water levels down to here, 2.6 volts, 3.38 uh, milliamps. Anyway, let's see. Obviously that is a pathetic amount of power coming out of this thing, but there are a lot of things that we can improve about this setup. So uh, we can't change the head, the amount of pressure, without doing some serious modifications to the downspouts on the house. Uh, but we aren't getting as much flow as, as we ought to be. We're only getting the amount of flow that a decent rain would give on this one section of roof. We should easily be able to double this flow rate. So that's going to help a lot. We're really using the wrong kind of turbine. This is an impulse turbine, a Pelton wheel is meant for a high velocity jet of water. And we're just never gonna get that with a couple of feet of head. So next video, gotta be changing this over to some kind of a reaction turbine, a Francis or a Kaplan, something. Turn the thing horizontally. Get it as, as actually where we can improve the head is by getting it lower. Put it right over the top of my uh, exit pipe here and run the generator, you know, vertical axis kind of thing, run that horizontally above it. And then, of course, the, the ace in the hole here is that we've got all this tube that wraps almost all the way around the house that we can fill that sucker up with water, let it build up, and then release it at whatever flow rate that we want. And that is just going to be gallons and gallons and gallons of water. We should easily be able to exceed Maybe I'll eat my words here, but we should easily be able to exceed the watt that we were shooting for uh, on the other section of the roof there was just through that one rain gutter. So if you want to see all that cool stuff, like, subscribe, and that way I'll see you in the next video.